Alright guys, I intend, I intend on doing more than one video on this inverter and include other inverters. This one here, you'll see I'm going to start with this inverter with an unboxing and what you get in a little bit of definition and then we will go from there to where we will review this inverter against this inverter which is a modified. So you have a true sine wave, which is this one, and we're going to unbox it starting right now. Hey everybody, I have got myself one of these here pure sine wave inverters, 1000 watt, officially made in China. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up and I mean we're literally going to open it up. We're gonna find out structurally how well this is built and all the other details. So let's open it up. I have brought with me my very official Missouri pig sticker and we will open this. All right, now opened up. This is what you get in the box. You get a attention questions and concerns. Get a hold to the SeriousSounds.com. Hope that focuses in. SeriousSounds.com information right here. These are the guys that sell them. I bet you could probably call that phone number direct and buy them if you want to instead of going through eBay. Um, here is the inverter. Now, what's really strange is this picture looks nothing like this picture already. Typical Chinese paperwork. And here's how they use it to cover everything in the world. 300 watt, 400 watt, 600, 800. Oh, check. Uh, that's 1,000 watt. It's 29 centimeter. 1,000 watt. Good. Okay. We're going to... Uh, we're going to do some brief stuff here. It tells you that it's a sinusoidal wave. It's not a not a square wave. So you, your appliances and things should work very well on it. And it's supposed to be 60 hertz. And those who don't know what 60 hertz means, the hertz is cycles of this per second. So this happens from zero peak to drop to zero again, 60 times a second. That's what your voltage hurts. That's what they're talking about. So opening it up, as you'll notice again, it does not look like the picture, <laughs> strangely enough. And um, we'll get it out of the box. It comes with a set, of wire, a set of cables and not exactly what I'd call bad. Probably, most undoubtedly, this is copper clad aluminum because I can tell by its weight, it's not very heavy. And, it comes with pretty good decent packaging, not tragic. I mean, it's protected well and even has, because they want to use the same box for numerous size inverters, it has little add-in blocks so that you can put a 2000 watt inverter in this space. Now you're going to ask yourself, what makes up the difference between a 1000 watt, here turn it around, and a 2000 watt inverter? Well. More MOSFETs and capacitors, and that is it. All right, so it has a fairly basic little fan on it. Looks like about a 60 millimeter. And two, two terminals, probably rated for somewhere in the 75 amp rating, which is not exactly a 1,000 watt inverter rating. That's a bad start. Um, and let's go ahead and get the box out of the way here. Okay. And this one here is a uh, the sticker on it, which they put different stickers on all of these. They're all still pretty much the same copycat Chinese inverter. They might have a different uh, U.S. outlet versus European outlet. And see that one there has the U.S. outlet. And it is giving you a meter, which these meters are generally not very accurate. So if you depend on that meter for your load, if you use that meter for your load, that's probably not a very smart idea. But as far as battery voltage, if it shows you battery voltage, that's pretty accurate most of the time. Um, that gives you an idea. If you drop too far, make sure your batteries are charged. Now, it, this inverter is, it looks like case heat sink design so that means it's the case is the heat sink and you can see the screws going through there would be probably double mosfets in every one of these positions and we're going to open this up and take a look 
The bottom of the case, however, is a much nicer design than what most of them have. It is actually using the extrusion also as the bottom of the case instead of just a metal panel. That's an improvement. So the Accurate Tools 1001 inverter, let's open up and see what we're dealing with. All right, now, one of the things about these is they do have an adjustment. Let's see if I can get that in some better light. They do have an adjustment that you can use to make sure that your meter is more accurate. Now, these adjustments are sensitive, so be careful. You'll just remove the four screws that are on the front of the panel. Make sure you're powered down. Make sure your cables are removed and you're powered down. And you can set the adjustment uh, on this. Now, what you do is you're going to remove this panel take it loose okay and then you're going to hook your cables back up and with a with something plugged in uh, put you a load on it that you know what that load is and then you're able to adjust what your output is and what it shows out here on the screen uh, out here on the display for these if you really really need an accuracy all right now we've opened this up I brought it outside because we're going to hook it up to a battery and make it run now I've also got out here a heater that I use when I paint, so it's a little messy, but it's 400 watts and it puts out 400 and 800 on the two settings. It's cheap Harbor Freight, a uh, little reflective heater, and it actually works extremely well for drying paint when you're painting. And I brought out one of these, a little small watt meter from Harbor Freight also. And as a comparison, I brought out a 1200 watt work zone and I, it's a peak which is also sold by Harbor Freight, uh, or it's the same maker that sells these to Harbor Freight, which is a Korean company. So these are made in Korea, not China. And um, they're very, actually, quality's pretty good on these. So you can see the physical difference here between the Peak and the, the Accurate Tools model. And um, hopefully that gives you an idea. 1200 watt modified versus 1000 watt true sign pure sine wave inverter now weight wise this weighs just a little more than this one so it's probably i mean this one here is right at about a half of an ounce more than this one probably the rubber ends i'm sure so let's go ahead and the way that these come apart is they have in them a snap side and over here they have a hinge side so they'll pop apart like so and then on the hinge, they slide off. So if you need to get into yours, that's how they're done. So we'll take that off. And up here on this one, what I'm seeing is I'm seeing your very high power uh, MOSFETs over here on this side, okay? They are isolated to the case. It's, they, they are connected to the case for heat sink. And over here on this side, your step up is got its own cooling but what's really strange is that all the air you see is traveling through the unit this way against these now these over here get extremely hot and that's not a very good not, that's really not a great design to do that because your fan is over here your vents are over here it pulls all your air down the length of the case on this side of it and even though this is obviously a true sine wave by looking at the electronics in it i can tell now that it's pretty risky to run these over here with very poor heat sinking and i'll probably i will probably put about three or four small quarter inch holes over here to get an air stream going through this area if possible and upgrade the fan which I've noticed immediately when I opened this up, the fan is, let me show you this, I can take the fan, is not very good. So I want you to look at this. It actually is not a very good design. It's a sleeve bearing, not a ball bearing, and it's a poor design. So I'm going to replace this fan with a... Uh, <laughs> with a better fan that's probably going to be quieter and from what I can tell looking at the fan it is 12 volt I don't know if you can see that there it is right there 12 volt it gives you the amp rating of 0 0.20 so it's claiming a very low draw which is nice now this design is obviously a true sine wave it has the singular large capacitor that, that keeps and supports and backs up the energy level. It is a 250 
So it is capable of doing what they're claiming. That's a good thing. The second thing is, is it does use the common 12V04 style uh, transformers in it, and they've proven to be dependable. It does show you that it has a uh, board in it right here that is designed to keep your sine wave accurate. And, and that maybe goes off the name, you know, accurate tools. <laughs> Who knows? However, it does have everything. It has a ground wire that is returned back to the case and to the frame to that terminal here on the back. So you can ground this instead of using you know, something hooked onto the body of it. You can ground this. It's designed for that purpose. So, so far so good. Cabling wise, it actually has sufficient cabling in it to create the 1000 watts but it does not have the sufficient cabling in it to hit the 2000 watt peak for any period of time that right there is eight gauge and eight gauge is sufficient for this in the short run to handle this claimed wattage of 1000 watts it can in a short peak time it can handle up to about 1550 watts according to specs that I have figured on this inverter. So what we're going to do now, I'm showing you what's inside of it. So you can see the details, a very good picture of it right there, and how it's made. And we'll look at the, uh, the capacitors that it has in it are of decent quality. They are of 25 volt for a 12 volt input. That's very good. And it's not the greatest. Um, and then it does have the cycle start the circuit for the cycle creation over here and and not not the greatest way that they install these on the board but they did they did this time strap these down i've seen these where they were just floating around on some people's videos and it's and actually has a strap on this big torad coil here and i do believe that it might be decent to function so what we're going to do is we're going to put it back together and you'll see in video number two where I'm going to run it through its paces, run it through a test, and we're going to run it 400 and 800. And if it smokes with an 800 watt on the meter, then you'll know that's not the one for you. All right, stay tuned for video two. Let's get this ball rolling.